All right, guys, I just wanted to do a quick video to respond to a question that many, many of you have been asking me, and that is, what are my thoughts on my colleague, Dave Rubin, sharing that he is expecting two babies with his husband via surrogate? I am a Christian who has been very outspoken about the biblical definition of marriage as well as my qualms with surrogacy. So this video is for those who have asked in good faith my perspective. This is not for all of those mean-spirited keyboard warriors who have demanded that I make a statement when and how they want me to. I don't care about them. I care about, as always, trying to add as much clarity to confusion that I possibly can. I have been on Dave's show where I have told him explicitly what I believe and why about marriage and sexuality. I have already talked to Dave privately about this situation, about how while I believe that he and his husband will make great dads, I cannot in good conscience, send my congrats. It's hard trying to balance how to love someone and to show them that you support them in certain ways while also staying true to your values and representing those values honestly. So I'm going to give four reasons why I could not congratulate Dave either publicly or privately even though I like him a lot and think that he is a great person. I will also answer the question about how I feel about the company that distributes my podcast, Blaze TV, publicly sending a congratulations about this. Connected to that, let me just say, because I know there's always speculation about this kind of thing, Blaze TV has never told me what I can or can't say. I have almost 600 episodes of Relatable. Never once have they censored me. I feel totally free to speak my mind. They've always been that way. They've always supported their hosts in saying the things that they want to say. So all of this said, I am going to give my theological reasons and my practical reasons for not being able to say congratulations and for my theological reasons about why I believe what I do about marriage and surrogacy and all of that. I'm not saying this because I expect Dave to align with him. Dave is not a Christian. Um, I am hoping to, again, Add clarity for my fellow Christians, give you food for thought. I hope the practical parts of this will make all of you think a little bit more deeply about some of the subjects that we'll be discussing. My first reason I can't give my congratulations is because I cannot celebrate that which God calls sin. And in this particular situation, I am talking about the definition of marriage according to the Bible. I know there's a lot of debate about what the Bible really says about sexuality, but the fact of the matter is, is that scripture spells it out really clearly. Not only is homosexuality explicitly prohibited in scripture, as in Romans 1, through 27, that's just one example, but the Bible also positively defines marriage in one way, as between a man and a woman. I like to use an alliteration to help me remember why the definition of marriage is so important according to scripture. So here it is. The definition of marriage is between a man and a woman in the Bible is rooted in creation. It is reiterated throughout scripture. It's repeated by Jesus himself. It is representative of Christ in the church. And in that way, it is reflective of the gospel. So let me just go through those really quickly. It's rooted in creation. Genesis 127 says, God made us in his image as male and female. Pretty straightforward. Two, it's reiterated throughout scripture. One example of this, Exodus 20, 12, says that we are to honor our father and our mother. Again, pretty specific. Ephesians 6, 2 in the New Testament says that this is the first commandment with a promise. So pretty important. And then three, it's repeated by Jesus himself. A lot of people say Jesus never talked about marriage or sexuality or gender. That's not true. Matthew 19, 4 through 5, in answering a question about divorce, Jesus goes back to creation. He says that God has created marriage as a union between husband and wife. And then four, it's representative of Christ and the church. Read Ephesians 5, 22 through 33 to read what I'm talking about. It tells us that the union between a Christian husband and wife is 
is actually an earthly picture of the eternal union between Christ, the groom, and his church, the bride. So that means that the definition of marriage between man and woman doesn't only have physical significance, but actually eternal significance. And then that leads to number five. In this way, as it is representative of Christ in the church, it is also reflective of the gospel. The Bible, and therefore all of human history, starts with a marriage between Adam and Eve and ends with a marriage between Christ the groom and his bride, the church. Far be it from us to change a definition that is so eternally weighty. So I can't celebrate that which God condemns. God is love. 1 John 4, 8 tells us that. Therefore, he defines love. The world likes to define love as unconditional affirmation of everyone's choices. But God is love and he says some things are wrong. So if God is love and he defines love, that means everything that he says is right or wrong, he says out of love. Therefore, the most loving thing I can do is agree with God. And this is just kind of a, a sub point under point number one. As a conservative, I think that we are supposed to be conserving the things that build strong, free, functioning, flourishing societies. The foundation of that, whether you like it or not, is biblical morality. And the second layer is the family, the nuclear family. If you don't conserve those two things, you don't get any other tenet of conservatism. We can be anti-woke, we can be anti-left wing, we can be anti-postmodern nonsense together, but you can only get so far playing defense. You can only get so far saying what you are against. You can't win if you're not building and you can't build without a foundation. Christianity and the family are the foundation of the West. If you reject those two things, if you try to redefine or dismantle those two things, everything else you hold dear and you say you're fighting for as a conservative will be gone too. I assure you that. Leah Thomas is currently competing against women in swimming, not because of a few crazy progressives, but because of conservatives who decided 10 years ago or more, that they were going to see the most important battles on morality and sexuality. And if you don't believe me, unfortunately, all we got to do is wait and see. Number two, I believe that children have a fundamental right to a mom and a dad. From a theological standpoint, not only do I want to honor God's created order, I am also against robbing a child of the opportunity to fulfill that first commandment with a promise, honor your father and mother. And I also see throughout scripture that fatherlessness is a category of vulnerability. And I think it's safe to say that robbing a child of their mother, creating mass motherlessness, which is really a historical phenomenon, qualifies as unbiblical as well. And on these two points, I have been enlightened by Katie Faust of Them Before Us, and I'm very thankful for her perspective on this. And then the more practical reason I believe that kids have a fundamental right to a mom and a dad is because decades of social science have told us that that is the ideal situation for kids to grow up and thrive. Let me read you a finding from the University of Virginia that is reflective of this decades of social science before this kind of research was considered taboo and politically incorrect. Quote, the intact biological married family remains the gold standard for family life in the United States. That's because this model provides best what children need emotionally, mentally, psychologically, again, in order to thrive throughout their lives. That doesn't mean that there are not exceptions. The reality is there are a lot of bad biological parents out there. Of course that is true. But we are talking about the ideal setup based on decades of data. And it's one thing when a child falls into a scenario where this isn't possible where the family isn't intact and adoption is a beautiful redemptive option that I am very supportive of. It's another thing to intentionally create a child to rob them of the opportunity to have a mother or a father to take away their opportunity to have the setup that we know is most ideal for their well-being. Children deserve to know whose they are, from where they come, and intentionally prohibiting them from doing that, in my opinion, is wrong. Number three, this goes with number two, 
Children are not social experiments. Every single person on the planet right now, every single person that has ever lived throughout human history has a biological mom and dad. Across time and cultures, this has been the family. It takes an insane amount of hubris for us to think today that we can completely rearrange the family and that it would have no consequences, especially for the most vulnerable party, which is children. We have no idea the extent of the long-term repercussions of intentionally taking a child away from their biological mom or dad, especially in the case of two men hiring a surrogate where you are buying eggs from one woman, you are renting the womb of another woman, and then you are taking the child away from both the biological mom and the woman who has carried them. I don't think we've even begun to see the potential impact of that. We know that children in the womb can be affected by the trauma and the stress that is experienced by the woman who is carrying the child. We know as moms the psychological and physiological importance of bonding after birth, of skin to skin, of eye contact. We are told this throughout our pregnancy and yet we suspend the knowledge that we have when it comes to two men creating a child and taking them away from the surrogate because it's politically incorrect. Too many people are too scared to even ask these questions because they don't want to be called homophobic and they're actually so scared of being called a name that even if you could prove to them that this was harmful to children, it wouldn't matter. They care more about just going along with the next cultural trend. Then the fourth reason is I am morally opposed to the commercialized surrogacy industry. And I'm not talking about necessarily the woman who carries the child of her sister who has cancer. I think that that's probably a separate ethical conversation to have. I am talking mostly about the commercialized surrogacy industry that both here and abroad is in general very corrupt. It is essentially the commodification and the objectification of both women and children. Yes, women are consenting to it, but in poor countries around the world and in poor areas here, a lot of women, they're first recruited and then they feel pressure because it's good money and they're not always presented with all of the potential risks. Surrogacy is a high risk pregnancy. The body is carrying a child that it didn't actually create. That's why a very high number of them end in miscarriage or in premature delivery. Now, who is that fair to? Is it fair to the child who suffers or dies? Is it fair to the woman who is then left to endure the physical, mental, emotional trauma of those experiences? Women's wombs should not be for rent by rich strangers. And consent doesn't automatically make that okay. Consent is not the only factor that you consider when you are judging whether or not something is moral or ethical. So let's have some common sense, some thoughtfulness, and some compassion toward all the parties who are involved in these situations. Situations. And you know, conservatives talk a lot about the erasure of women because of the transgender movement using terms like pregnant people or birthing people. I mentioned Leah Thomas earlier taking records and titles and spots away from women. Conservatives are really angry about this because this is erasing women. Well, look, two men buying eggs and then renting a uterus is also the erasure of women. You're basically saying that men and women, moms and dads are totally interchangeable and that we can just buy and rent women's bodies and then they could be moved out of the picture and it's fine. I'm sorry, I don't think that's fine. As Christians, I don't think we should be celebrating the disruption of God's created order, especially when the consequences of this disruption rest on innocent children. As conservatives, in my opinion, we are supposed to be conserving some of the most fundamental parts of a free and functioning civilization, one of which is the nuclear family. As people, I think that we should have compassion for all of the parties involved in these situations. And if you want to know more about the surrogacy industry, I have linked to episodes that I've done in the past with a woman named Jennifer Lal, where we talk about a lot of this. Now, do I care that Blaze TV, the company that distributes my podcast, tweeted out a congratulations that seemed to be representative of the company as a whole. 
I definitely disagreed with that decision. And that's really all I'll say about that. I'm thankful that I'm allowed to voice my disagreement however and whenever I want to. So how am I trying to balance? How do we balance loving someone who makes a decision that we really fundamentally, morally, even theologically disagree with? Well, I think that we talk to them. We continue to show up for them. We support them in the ways that we can. As long as that is not us affirming something that God calls sin, they are made in the image of God. Their children are made in the image of God. And therefore they have amazing value and worth just like the rest of us. And so we pray for them. We help them in whatever tangible ways we can. We are kind to them and we continue to speak the truth in love to them. That's my goal. I know that, you know, this will still make some people angry. I am trying to be as gracious as I possibly can without compromising at all on the truth. And a lot of you were sincerely asking for clarity on this and I wanted to give it. So I hope this helps.